Well, hello there, minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well, if you're new around here, we've been working on a series of mixing, color mixing videos. Basically, uh, using the colors in my new Mind of Watercolor 10 watercolor set. This is a tube set from Mgram. It's available only at Wet Paint. There's a link in the description. I'm going to be putting all of these uh, color mixing videos pertaining to this set and a playlist so uh look for that in the future in the playlist again if you're new around here this is the set that i swatched it out in this palette i'm using this uh, magello palette we've been working our way around kind of talking about particular color groups blues we've done greens and whether or not you buy this set uh, i hope this has some great mixing information and gives you some ideas for exploring your own color mixing and essentially just learning more about colors. And I think one of the best ways to do that is to start with a limited group, preferably a group that spaces out well on the color wheel and splits the primaries. So I apologize to those of you who have been following along this series. I know I'm repeating myself. This is a color wheel that uh, I made just sort of generally placing the colors in this palette. The smaller swatches, uh, are mixes that you would make to fill in spots. Uh, we split the blue untraditionally with a blue and a phthalo green blue shade. We split the red with a scarlet pyrrole and a quinacridone rose. We split the yellow with an azo yellow and an Indian yellow. And that gave us a nice spacing. Uh, we included red iron oxide and neutral tint to round out the selection. So that's where we are. And today, uh, what I wanted to do is I promised to do a video on earth tones, your common earth tones. And what I've done here is I've swatched out five of the most common that you find on palettes. And these, uh, there are a number of earth tones, different pigments. Uh, most of them are PBR pigments. Some of them can be, uh, PR pigments, some of them can be PY pigments. That's not important. Uh, in this palette, we're talking about mixing earth tones, so we're talking about hues and approximating hues. And these, I think, five represent the range pretty well, what you find in earth tones. And I'll just go over them. These are the actual uh, earth tone pigments. These are not mixes. I've got these off of other palettes. Some of these are Sennelier, a couple of them are, well, one of them is Core and one of them is Mission Gold. That, that's neither here nor there. They represent, I think, the range of browns pretty well. So first off is Yellow Ochre, very, very popular. Uh, a lot of Yellow Ochres out there are not transparent. They're either semi-transparent or semi-opaque, but it's a, a popular one. So we'll look at mixing something akin to that. Another one in this same color scheme would be uh, raw sienna. So on some palettes you'll see raw sienna and it's very similar. Usually on a palette you don't have both. You have one or the other. Raw umber, which is uh, very low in intensity. Another similar pigment that you'll see on palettes um, is sepia. I have on my M. Graham palette, on my expanded 20 color palette, I have sepia. Sepia maybe leans a little more yellow. This maybe leans a little more red. Then we have burnt umber, which again is a little more intense than raw umber. Most brands and varieties uh, are a little more orange, but again, uh, it's an earth tone, so it's deep. These Both of these can be very deep in color. Another color that approximates burnt umber you'll see sometimes is Van Dyke brown. Then we have burnt sienna, which is your classic sort of rusty red brown, orange brown. On some palettes you'll have permanent brown which, or red brown it's called in some. Now again, you may have tons of other earth tones out there, but they'll usually fit somewhere in this hue range. Now before we start mixing, I want to point out that they all, all of these exist on the color wheel, but most earth tones exist in this area. They're just darker, and more neutralized, as you can he see here by the ones that I mixed with neutral tint. All right, well, let's start with an easy one. Yellow ochre. Very simple with this palette. Neutral tint, Indian yellow. Get yourself some Indian yellow out there and just pull in a little bit of neutral tint until you see yellow ochre. It's really that simple. And there are different brands, you know, out there 
Different brands will look different. So I'm seeing this looks a little yellower than this. Tap into the Scarlet Purell. If you want to get an exact, exact match. And there you go. You're pretty much in the ballpark. Okay, so how about raw umber? Well, there's more than one way to make all of these colors, really. But I'm trying to hit it the simplest way. Um, again, I would pull out a nice uh, big wash of neutral tint. Only this time we're going to stay mostly with neutral tint. We're going to pull Indian yellow over into it and a little scarlet pearl. Pretty doggone close. That's a little bit grayer. No problemo. Just add more color. So basically the same mix. I just reversed uh, the emphasis. More neutral tint here. Maybe a little bit more Scarlet Purell. Actually, if you use more of the Scarlet Purell, you're probably closer to a raw umber. If you bend it more towards the yellow ochre, you're probably closer to a sepia. But you want mostly neutral tint if you're aiming for a sepia. And I stress, it's not really important that you match these hue names exactly. I'm just trying to get you in the ballpark so you can see uh, where these earth tones come from. Where these general hues come from. And again, the great thing about it is they're all very, very transparent. And the other great thing about it is you can just bend them. You can bend them in subtle ways. Once you have um, yellow ochre, for example, let's make a orange, oranger, but more intense version of it. Just really, really nice what you can do with just a little neutral tint. So burnt umber, um, we're going to start out again with neutral tint. I'm going to go back to... Scarlet Pierrot, the tad bit of Indian yellow, but this time we want more color in there. Maybe a little more of the Scarlet Pierrot. Burnt Umber is an orange leaning brown, orange red leaning brown, so that makes sense. How close are we? Oh, we probably need more color. I'm pulling both yellow ochre and Scarlet Pierrot in here. That makes an orange. We're getting close, but I think I want more color yet. And you can work on it till you get it right. That's looking pretty close right there. So, once again, neutral tint, but more color this time. A little yellow ochre, a little more of scarlet Pierrot. We can add an, an orange brown, essentially. And you'll end up with a burnt umber, maybe something like uh, a Van Dyke brown. Add more color, make it more intense. Add less color, make it less intense. Uh, you can see here, my raw umber has dried. It looks a little more like a sepia. So uh, the intensity, you just have to keep playing with them. But you're in the neighborhood. Burnt Sienna, really easy. That's pretty much a one-for-one -one match with red iron oxide. You're already there. Permanent brown. Just redder. Uh, sometimes called a red brown. Transparent red iron oxide. I pull in a little of the quinacridone rose. Want to get it nice and deep. If it's not deep enough, you can touch in a little neutral tint. That might de desaturate it a little bit. But I think all in all, you're going to be pretty close. And you got a pretty nice red brown. Sometimes you have to wait till the drying shift is over so you can see, you know, where you need to make adjustments. But again, I stress, uh, work towards ranges. Ranges and ballpark in which you can just fill out a whole range of hues that work through all of these. You're not necessarily trying to match, you know, if I'm painting with actual yellow ochre, actual raw umber, actual burnt umber, I'm not using those usually just by themselves anyway. I'm usually bending them with other colors. Now, are there other ways to make those colors or similar? What? Yes, uh, compliments, and that's something you can play with. 
yellow ochre. We get a little different result, so you have to use a little different uh, ratio. But put in some of that dioxazine purple, and you'll come pretty close. Don't need much of the purple at all. It's pretty powerful. Raw umber, I would probably always use the neutral tint method there. Although you could experiment with some blue and some purple. If I go heavy on the purple, I don't end up with raw umber so much. So I probably have to bring in maybe azo yellow. I'm going to add a little blue to that. Pretty close. It's, And I'm not going to go through these others. Uh, again, though, experimenting with your complements will give you all of these same ranges and more hues besides that are just interesting and beautiful and you can cast them in different ways you know i love making sort of an olive green umber and we kind of touched on uh, one way you would do that in the last video See, this is coming out with a little bit of a red cast but that is just cool to me that that kind of discovery is just really neat and to know that i can make all these earth tones from this palette is power that is color mixing painting power and the more you learn that and practice that with whatever set of colors you have the more while you're on the fly just dipping here and there and, and painting and just doing it second nature and letting it become like riding a bike it takes a little practice but it's worth it like i said it's it's the multiplication tables of color mixing Learn your multiplication tables, okay? <laughs> so you can recite them. All right, that was a short one, but I hope uh, this was helpful. Hope you guys will practice your earth tone mixing. And thank you all for watching. Thank you so much, patrons, for your continued support. It's vital to this channel, and I appreciate it so much. And we'll see everybody in the next video. Bye-bye.